an exciting and busy day, guys. So I'm gonna hang out with my kids for a minute before I leave for the day. This is crazy. <gasps> okay, I'm about to leave, but I'll tell you where I'm going in a second. First, I'm gonna show you a little Target haul because the babies need warmer clothes. I got this thing for Flynn's birthday. It's a frog dissection kit. There was a day in class when I was in biology in high school where we had to dissect a frog, and I was like, I am not doing that, and I did not go to class that day. Anyway, this way you can dissect a frog and see what's inside of a frog and how it works. He's gonna be so into that without having to actually dissect a frog. But here is the stuff I got for the kids. These are cute, are these for Flynn? Oh yeah, these are Flynn's. And then the babies, I got them some cozy flannel warm ones because it is cold and I don't want them to get cold toesies. So we got Santa. I got this little snowflake pajama set for Miss Maisie Jo. Car flannel pajamas. Ooh, these are soft for Wesley. Truck flannel pajamas for Wesley. A beanie for Mr. West. Head cozy warm and like polka dot princess ballerina shirt for Maisie. I thought these were flannel and they're not. Anyway, there's enough truck onesies to go around. So Maisie's starting to get into trucks actually so they can share the truck onesies. Okay, one more thing before I go. We got to do Abbott. Oh, this one's a blue one. I a wonder. blue one? What's it going to be? Should we check this out? <gasps> I think it's the scorpion. You think so? Yeah. That's number seven. What is that? It's a flame. Whoa. They got something fluffy today. What is it? I don't know. It looks like a bunny with mochi? I don't know. <laughs> All right, Flynn, come find my seven. Oh, a long one. Too. A long, tiny one. Oh, I love this one. It's a wreath. So cool. You like it? Wreath. I gotta go. Okay, now I'm in the car and I can actually talk to you guys. I'm headed to the children's hospital with Corey. Corey always comes with me because he's my queen of the land. We're headed to the children's hospital of Los Angeles. It's the first time in years that I'm allowed to go because there's a pandemic and obviously the most important thing is keeping all those kiddos safe. And now um, they're allowing people to come read to the kids. And so that's where we're headed right now. We're gonna go there to read to these sweet little kids. I'm very excited about it. So yeah, I don't know exactly all what we're doing if I'm just reading to them if I'm singing to them if we're doing crafts together if we're just playing together I don't know but I'm excited to go hang out with them and spend some time with them so yeah I'll see you guys after okay guys I'm home and everyone's asleep so I went to the Children's Hospital of Los Angeles to read to some of the kids there I was so excited because I did this before the pandemic and everything and then obviously they shut all that down during the pandemic to keep all the little kiddos safe they only just recently opened it back up to some people to come read to the kids. Now, I know most people out there are like, pandemic's over, why is anyone acting like this anymore? Well, places like hospitals, especially children's hospitals, they've been living like it's still the pandemic this entire time because they have to keep their little kiddos safe. Anyway, I was really excited when they emailed me and were like, hey, we're finally opening it back up to volunteers to come and read to the kids if you want to. And I was like, yes! So um, we drove to the children's hospital of Los Angeles. I got to read to a few kids. It was really lovely and amazing and obviously Obviously, everyone was wearing masks the whole time. I love doing it for a couple of reasons. One, I like reading to the kids and spending time with them. It's the holiday season and they're literally stuck in the freaking hospital dealing with things they should never have to deal with. So it's nice to be there to just talk to them, hang out with them, read to them, sing to them, and Oh, hey, lovey. Okay, Eric came in, and so I'm gonna fill him out because I haven't even talked to him about today. So I did two different readings. So the first reading I did was just with one little girl, and her parents were there. She's a cancer patient there, and she was so sweet. And we do this whole like big story time. There's like people who work there who do it every single week, but I'm their second guest they've had since they've opened it back up since COVID because they just started letting people come to the hospital. She was really shy, but she wanted a Christmas story, so I read her the night before Christmas. It was really sweet. She was adorable, and then she left, and then three kids came in from part of a different area of the hospital. And we read three different books together. We had a bunch of time to read lots of stuff. We had a lot of fun. We sang and we read books. We did like imagination time. What did you read? What did you say? I read a book about a dog that likes ice cream, but every time he tried to eat his ice cream, dinosaurs would show up to try to eat his ice cream. But the dog had a fun song about eating his doggy ice cream. What kids like? Dogs, ice cream, <laughs> dinosaurs, dinosaurs, songs. And I read them a song about a cat on Christmas. Did I say I read them a song? I read them a book about a cat on Christmas. And then I read them a Peep the Cat book. One of the other big reasons I like to do it is to show you guys how easy it is to volunteer because I see a lot of people when I do the fundraising 
Libertarians are being like, I don't have money to donate. And that's totally fine and understandable. Like, I don't expect everyone to donate money to the fundraiser. Learning about childhood cancer and different ways you can help is helpful to kids fighting cancer in their families, but also donating your time. So like, it didn't cost me any money today except for gas money to drive to the hospital to read to the kids. I've gone before and just did crafts with the kids all day. There's lots of different things you can do at local organizations or your local hospital, but I'm very excited that they've opened it back up again so that I can keep going back. It was great and lovely. Yeah, I'm sure I'll talk a lot more about that later, but for now, I want to get some stuff ready for the fundraiser and for the concert. Yeah, so I'll talk to you guys a little bit later. Eric is vacuuming. Sorry for the loud noise. No, you can keep vacuuming. It's okay. They don't mind. Do you guys mind? Do you mind if he keeps vacuuming? They don't mind. They, they don't mind. <laughs> Um, I have about 10 trillion packages to open because Flynn's birthday stuff, fundraiser gifts, Christmas stuff. There's a lot, a lot of packages. You know what this is? There's a freaking TikTok ad that got me. So the breakfast nook has mm, ugly upholstery. I don't like the material that is on the furniture in there. It's gonna be a while before I can find someone to like measure it and make from scratch like custom things to fit over those things. I don't know how that works. It's very fancy. But I saw this thing on TikTok that was like, you just take it and you just put it over the furniture. So anyway, I bought a couple like in just random colors. I thought this was beige and it's definitely like a brown. So we'll have to see if that works. Some new house slippers for Flynn. Flynn's having a bug birthday party. Well, he keeps changing it. He wanted a bug birthday party and then he changed it to a frog and toad birthday party and then he changed it to a reptile birthday party. But I already bought the bug decoration, so now it's a bug, frog, reptile birthday party. Anyway, I got this dress from Hazy. It has a bunch of bugs all over it. And I got these pajamas, which are just matching for Wes. More shoes for Flynn. These are the squeaky kinds. They squeak when you walk. Ah, oh, okay, so when Flynn said he wanted a bug party, got him bug stuff, and then he said he wanted a frog party so I got these little lily pads and little frogs that can be on the lily pads just this decoration so I don't know we're not going full out like we did for the duck party obviously because that was their first birthday party so that was a big one and this is his fourth birthday party and we're still like in the process of moving and Flynn kind of gets overwhelmed when there's crowds of people so I'm not doing like a big shindig it's just like a little family get together this is very exciting so the kids all have bug outfits but so do we this is my bug shoot. Oh, that's cool. And you have matching. Do they glow in the dark? I don't say it glows in the dark. Kind of blurry. It kind of like hurts oh, my eyes to what? look at. What's happening to me? Am I okay? It, like the way that it's printed oh, on, it like hurts your eyes I'm to look so at. Happy. What? It's not just me. Like look at this one's head. This this is worse. <gasps> it it's makes me feel like I have bad vision. It's okay. So it's not just me. You I guys, I wonder if it'll translate. I can even read the QR code. Yeah, I computer. wonder if it'll translate to the camera. Okay, I doubt it will, but like when you look That's at these wrong. close with the naked eye, I can see in the viewfinder that it's not weird to look at. But like in person, whoa, it hurts your eyes. That is weird. I feel like my eyes have to adjust after I look at it because like things are blurry when I look up after looking at that. And then I got him this. Look at this. Oh, this is great. He's gonna love this. Look at that. Frogs flew up. That's awesome. He was wearing a bug shirt today, and we're getting ready for bath. We're, we're getting ready for bath, and he goes, "Daddy, can I wear that shirt for many days, like a hundred days?" He wants to keep wearing the same bug shirt. Oh, he it looks just like that, but it's bugs. He's gonna love them. Sure. Yeah, it says every different type of frog. He's Get ready for the next one. Oh, I forgot to tell you this other girl I met at the hospital that was amazing. She was, I think she was like 10 or nine or something like that. And her mom was so awesome. Her mom, her daughter got diagnosed with cancer when she was like eight months old. So the mom, of course, did what so many incredible, awesome, amazing, just ugh, inspiring moms do. And she was like, I'm going to figure this out. I'm going to figure out how to make my baby okay. Like just as you do as a mom when like your kid gets sick. And now she has like just documentaries. There's a documentary I want to watch on Netflix from this mom that I met tonight. She's so sweet. It's called oh something about weed. I don't remember, but I just remember her saying weed because like um, cannabis is like such a helpful thing for so many cancer patients, you know. But the little girl, her daughter was so sweet, and her daughter was so cute, and she had a little frog that she got from the doctor, and she was so funny. Like she's like, this is my frog, and I was telling her about Flynn. And Flynn likes frogs, and she's like very talkative and very outgoing, and she's like. Yeah, and who's this handsome guy about Corey? And I was like, this is my best friend, Corey. And she was like, oh, are you married? And I was like, I'm married, but he's not married. And she goes, well, you can't marry me. I can't be your wife. I have a boyfriend. And she was like nine or something like that. She was so funny. She was so cute. And then she was telling me, she's like, I got these crazy elves in my house and they're ripping up all the paper everywhere, everywhere you look. She's like talking about everything that the elves are doing. And I was like, I have crazy elves in my house. And I was just like, oh my gosh, this morning they got into my balloons and they were 
are balloons everywhere. They're dangling from balloons in the trees. And she goes, hmm, next time you see me, can you bring me a balloon? <laughs> I was like, yeah, sure. She was so cute. She was so funny. She was so funny. It was so awesome. Anyway, let's keep going. By the way, this is an original prototype. Prototype, oh, I can't talk, of the No Sleep Club onesie. I got this so long ago, like months and months and months and months, like beginning of the year long ago. And it was, I thought, too bright of a blue. I wanted like a darker navy blue. And the inside flannel, it's like very yellow and orange kind of, and I wanted less. So this was the first prototype I got and changed a couple things. Anyway, we got more bows for Miss Maisie Jo. She's growing that hair, decorates. I like to make my Christmas presents very sparkly and pretty after I wrap them. So I put like bows, but I also put like Fligilly floppies. That's why I buy little flibbly floppies when I find them on sale and really cheap. Confetti for my live shows. Hmm. I got this because I've got a bunch of things for like baby monitors essentially. So this thing shows me what the baby monitors say. So anyway, that wasn't very exciting. That's it. Oh my gosh, you guys. I'm desperately trying to get the office area done. Corey and I. Look at all this. Corey put all those pictures behind. We've been like unboxing for weeks, trying to get the Miranda wall, like everything. It feels like nothing's been done. We've been unpacking and packing and look, we still have all this to unpack. And I've literally never stopped unpacking and building furniture, it's crazy. So I think it's probably two in the morning. I don't know where my phone is. It got lost in the hustle and bustle of unpacking everything. But I found that documentary that I mentioned earlier. So when we got to the hospital, we met this really sweet, amazing, hilarious girl named Sophie, who was diagnosed with cancer when she was like eight months old or something like that. She was so freaking funny and she was so just amazing. Like her energy, her personality, just like you fell in love with her the second she started talking. She was so awesome. Anyway, she super cool and um, wonderful and her mom was super awesome. Her mom was like, oh my God, is this where you got your pants? I was like, yes, is that where you got your pants? We started talking about our pants and fashion and just like laughing and momhood, talking mom stuff. And then we started talking about all the amazing work that she has done trying to find help for kids with cancer because her daughter has cancer. She was so incredible and she mentioned to me this documentary she did called Weed the People. That's what it's called by the way, Weed the People. I am 10 minutes in, everyone needs to watch it. It is so wonderful <laughs> as far as like informing people about why childhood cancer needs funding. I so strongly recommend it and I'm only 10 minutes into it. Like within 10 minutes, they've said so many things that I'm like, oh my gosh, yes, this is what I'm always telling people. Like the fact that a lot of the treatments they use on children who have cancer are treatments that were made in the 70s, 80s, and they haven't updated them since then. Like these kids are getting cancer treatments that are kind of generic as opposed to a cancer treatment that is specific for their type of cancer because a lot of the cancers that kids have are so specific and so rare that they just don't do research on them they don't have funding to find new treatments for them. And so they give these kids, these little kids, treatments that were made 20, 30, 40, 50 years ago because there's nothing else to give them. And they don't work and it's so awful. And they need our help, they need funding. And anyway, so there's a lot of stuff in this documentary that like talks about that. You get to meet different kids who have cancer and their families. Like I said, I'm only 10 minutes in, talks about the stigma of weed or CBD, cannabis, and it being being used as a medical treatment for help for people and how it can help. And it's just, it's so, I'm just, I'm so fascinated by this documentary. I think it's so awesome. The woman I know from the Children's Hospital, this woman who is in this documentary, she is incredible. Man, there's nothing like a mom on a mission. She's incredible. So anyway, I highly recommend this documentary. And in fact, I know I say, if you donate, you're entered to win prizes at the fundraiser. Literally, if you just watch this documentary, you are entered to win prizes for my fundraiser because one of the best ways that you can help kids with cancer is educating yourself on it and learning about it so that you know how to help or how to tell people how to help. And, and that's the, the the whole reason I do these fundraisers every year is because one kid who had cancer told me at a meet and greet, she's like, could you just like talk about childhood cancer sometime, just raise awareness for it? She didn't want me to raise money. She wasn't asking me to donate money. She wasn't asking me to do anything crazy. She's just like, just raise a little bit of awareness. And I was like, okay. And then the second I started like educating myself on it and learning about it, I was like, holy smokes, like how more people need to know about this. Like it's crazy how little funding these kids are getting from the government and how much help they need and how little research is going into the treatments that they need to get better. So anyway, it's a great documentary so far and I'm only 10 minutes in. So if you guys watch it, highly recommend, please watch it. It's hard to see kids with cancer, but I think it's important for everyone to see to see how important it is that they need our help. So anyway, if you guys want to watch it, please do. If you want to donate, 
donate. The Fundly link is right below. Every penny that is raised to that Fundly link goes to Kids with Cancer and their families and organizations that help them. Also, the concert, the same thing, tickets, if you wanna see the concert on Sunday, which I will be up late planning and prepping for and singing. And I literally have no idea. Oh, there's my phone, I found it. It is, oh, it's 1.15 in the morning. And I probably have about three hours of work to do, so I'm gonna be up very late. But um, I'm excited to work on the, the concert a little bit tonight and try to unpack a little bit more. We'll see how far I get. <gasps> There's my husband. Oh, we have to do Elf on the Shelf. Oh my God. Elf on the Shelf. I have not been vlogging about Elf on the Shelf. We have two elves, okay? So this is the Elf on the Shelf. I'm gonna talk in a way that I don't know who's watching. Here's the deal. This is Elf on the Shelf. If you touch it, it loses its magic, right? I'm allowed to touch it. I've talked to Santa. He was like, touch it girl you can touch the elf it's fine because you have mommy superpowers so i can only touch it at nighttime. okay so i can touch the elf just so you know don't freak out that i'm touching this elf. but this is the elf on the shelf flynn has been very into this this year jojo gave this to him a couple years ago and he's like oh my god he's so into the elf on the shelf one of the first days of elf on the shelf he accidentally touched it because there was a candy next to the elf and he accidentally like, barely touched it and he was devastated i mean my poor sweet sensitive son was so devastated he thought he made the magic away because he accidentally touched it. Luckily, Santa found out. We wrote Santa a letter and he was like, it's all good. It was an accident. Just try not to do it again. Love ya. So we're very happy to know that the the Elf God's magic pack. However, when I went um, on my tour to Portland and Seattle, Flint, I asked him, what do you want me to bring you back? And he said, I want you to bring me back an elf, a magical elf that I can touch. That was his one request. Luckily, you guys are amazing and you always give me wonderful, sweet gifts and letters and whatever. Never necessary. It was so sweet, so I'm so appreciative. But anyway, someone gifted me this at one of the shows. And I was like, oh my God, an elf you can touch. I was so excited. And so um, I brought it home and I told him, hey, look, I have an elf you can touch touch a magical elf so now they work together at night when we go to sleep they go to the north pole and they talk to santa and tell him how uh, we've all been you have to say what he named them Oh yes, I will tell you what he named this one. Cause you named the elf. So this one's named Jojo. That's what he named it when he got this one. This one, we said you have, you have to name it. And at first he named it Advent Elf cause we were doing Advent colors. But then he was like, no, I'm changing the name. This elf's name is Flynn Loves Maisie. <laughs> or Mr. Elf is my bestie. Or Mr. Elf is my bestie. Those are his two names. His name is Mr. <laughs> elf is my bestie or his name is Flynn Loves Maisie. And he takes it everywhere. He takes it to the park. He takes it to the museum. He sleeps with it. Like he, loves this elf so much. So anyway, I haven't been filming when I do Elf on the Shelf because I've always already closed out the vlog. When I say what I've been doing, I mean like trying to stay awake to see what they're up to, you know? But every night whenever these elves go to the North Pole and they come back, it's always something crazy and I have not been filming it. I don't know if that's something that interests you guys. Okay, so I'll show you a couple pictures. Okay, okay so this was last night and this morning. So the magical elf he could touch was in his room covered in a balloon and a bunch of leaves. And then we went outside and there was the elf that you can't touch dangling from a tree with balloons. Crazy. Okay, here's a picture of Flynn at the park with his elf <laughs> on a swing. <laughs> This was the night before. There's the magic elf you can touch. It's in his room and it was holding on some toilet paper. And then um, look at this, it was crazy. The toilet paper goes so far through the house. It just keeps going and going and going forever and ever and ever, all the way through the house. Couldn't believe it. Those crazy elves get into some crazy mischief, guys. Kept going all the way down the stairs and up on the stairs was the other elf that you can't touch with a candy bar. He's been into all kinds of craziness. Okay, here's another day. The elf was like sneaking into his blocks, getting crazy, silly goose. And then another morning, the elf had found a pen and wrote Flynn's name on the bananas. It was crazy. And that was while I was gone on my tour. So this elf is a total goof. I don't know what it's gonna do tonight, guys. Flynn calls him a trickster. He calls him a trickster. So we'll see what he does tonight. But first I have like a lot of work to do, so I'm gonna go do that. Okay, I love you guys. See you tomorrow. Donate to the fundraiser. See you at the concert. Okay, bye. <laughs>